Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of I'm So Tired that they did on October 8th, 1968. In February of 68, the Beatles were in India studying transcendental meditation with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi Bear, mm -hmm. and they were uh, supposed to listen to two 90-minute lectures per day and then go off on their own to work on their own transcendental meditation techniques. So needless to say, there was plenty of time for them to write songs, and write songs they did for their upcoming album. This was the first time the Beatles were without cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs, but it caused John Lennon to have great insomnia. Uh, I'm So Tired was written 100% by John Lennon, and it has many John Lennon characteristics in that uh, there's a measure of 2-4 in the verse, uh, the verses are seven measures long, uh, the choruses are six measures long. What I mean is it's not your usual groupings of four like so many early Beatles songs. Uh, about I'm So Tired, John has said, I wrote it in India. I couldn't sleep. I've been meditating all day and then I couldn't sleep at night. We were not supposed to leave the room because of this thing about staying in one room for five days. So I was so tired I couldn't get to sleep. That's it. John has also said that I'm So Tired was one of his favorite Beatle tracks. Uh, he liked the sound of it and he thought he sang it quite well, which is unusual for John Lennon. And although John was uh, in India with his current wife Cynthia, you can tell in the lyrics that he was really missing Yoko Ono and he wished she was there with him. Uh, in May of 68, John recorded an acoustic version of I'm So Tired at George's house in Surrey. But officially, they're back in the studio October 8th, 1968, EMI Studio 2. They're recording on an 8-track tape. Um, they use four channels to do the rhythm track with John singing live. 14 takes of the song. And at the end of the song, John is doing some mumbling. And what he says is, Monsieur, 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 how about another one? He wanted to do another take. But the Paul is dead wackos think that uh, when you play that backwards, they hear Paul is dead, miss him, miss him, miss him, which is just complete bull hockey. <laughs> Anyhow, after they got the uh, rhythm section done, they did overdubs. There was uh, extra vocals, and uh, John doubled some of his lead vocals. Uh, Paul overdubbed the piano. John overdubbed uh, organ. Uh, George did some extra rhythm guitar work, um, and George also played a lot of lead guitar fills, but only two of them were used on the final mix. They never played the song live except when they were doing the Let It Be film at Twickenham, and uh, the White Album was released on November 25th, 1968. That was the first time we got to hear I'm So Tired. So I think that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his Epiphone Casino on I'm So Tired. I have mine plugged into a 1967 Fender Deluxe Reverb, and the tone is pretty flat. Um, the song starts off with a little uh, kickoff of John playing on and for and, the notes E, F sharp, and G sharp. So, one, two, three. And then you need these chords. You'll need an A. An A flat, a D, an E, an A down here, F sharp minor, D again, to E7, that A again. Then uh, E augmented, F sharp minor, and D minor. Those are the verse chords. And it should be noted that although the song is based pretty much on a 1 6 2 5, you know, an old doo wop thing, which would be. You've heard a million songs like that. John throws the extra little kick in it by making the second chord an A flat. You know, it's very interesting. And he's singing and playing live, but the rhythm uh, pattern that he does is is not just down and up. There's a lot of variations in the whole song, and we'll go through it. So during the verse, uh, he plays. He kind of alters between one and a two e and three and four and. And then one and a two e and three and four n. That's kind of what he's thinking during the verse. It, there's there's a few alterations, 
But uh, let me do it for you. And again, charts and tabs will be at MikePacelli.com. You can get it exactly how he played it if you care to. But uh, with Ringo, it's a little faster tempo actually, but we'll take it there. To be one, two. a verse and if you want to get it actually precise when he plays that uh, E augmented it's like three and four and then a you know kind of an open string thing as he's moving to the F sharp does a lot of that and I'll stick that in the chart so after that first verse he repeats uh, that pretty much that same pattern for the second verse when he gets to the first chorus uh, he changes his rhythm and the rhythm is like uh, kind of chunk along it's like one and a two and a three and a four and a so on the a for the for the chorus uh the chords chorus chords are a to e7 to d to a and the rhythm is like this again ringo two three chorus Got that? Okay, thanks, Ring. Now, when he gets into verse three, he kicks it again. The band stops and he does that E, F sharp, G sharp again. And the rhythm is going to change uh, a lot here. Now, this time it's uh, it starts off the same, like one and a two E and, but instead of one and two and on the A flat, it's also again one and a two E and, the D one and the two E and a. Uh. <laughs> the E is one and, uh, I'm sorry, three and four E and uh. And then on the next A, it's a little reggae rhythm. It's like, boom. I guess it'll be easier if I play it for you. So let's check out verse three. Two, three, four. He's doing all that while he's singing live, so it's uh, you know particularly particularly cool. And on chorus two, he changes the rhythm again. Now it's again it's the same chord A chugging along, but it's like uh, one and a two and three E and a four and one and a two and three E and a four and. All right, so let me just play you that second chorus. Very cool rhythm. Two, three, four. <laughs> And then when he gets to the D, it's full strums. It's just full, stop Ringo, thanks. It's full 16 notes. And he does that all the way out. Four. Two, three, four, the last one. And if you listen to the record, he, he does something really cool on the very end. He hits that last A chord and slides all the way up. To that. So the very last one. Again, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com so you could see it even clearer. George Harrison is playing his Sonic Blue Fender Stratocaster on I'm So Tired. And I have mine plugged into a 1964 AC30 with the volume cranked just enough so that if I played it hard, it would break up slightly, kind of like a uh, like a British blues sound. But George plays very light on it, uh, and he's the epitome of taste and choice in that he lets John Lennon's rhythm be the dominant factor in this song, and he just adds, and he adds so perfectly. Um, so what he does is he plays single notes, just basically the roots of the chord for the most part. Like he'll play an A to an A flat, 
D, two E's. Repeats that. F sharp this time. Then these chords, he gets his A chord, just three note chords picked up. His A chord like this, his uh, E augmented like this, and his F sharp minor like this. And then he plays a, a, a little D minor triad. So a verse would sound like this. Two, three, go. And then he's into the second verse. Plays the second verse exactly the same. Except on the D minor, he plays a line. He, play, he plays a little uh, guitar fill. It's probably an overdub, but we'll include it in his part. Uh, and the little overdub is one. Slowly, one. So coming out of those, uh, the A to the E to the uh, F sharp, one. And then we're into the chorus. Now in the chorus, he just does a little rock and roll, ing, where he's playing a, you know, a, a root fifth to root six. And the slide. The slide is on the G string, sixth fret to the B string, fifth fret. All right, so just rocking it. Root uh, fifth of an E chord, and the same slide. Down to the D, and he changes. So the fourth fret of the G string to the third fret of the B string, and hits an A chord. So that's the bridge. I'm sorry, the chorus. Verse three, he goes back to playing the exact same single note things, you know. on these chords. He plays his A here, same like the first time, his E uh, augmented up here, his F sharp minor up here, and then he plays this line. Um, into the A, uh, rocking. And again, what that is, is like just kind of hammering on on a D minor. So you go. And then cool slides from the 12th fret of the G down to the 7th of the G. And then from the tenth fret of the of the uh, D string to the third, hits it again, and then he's into the A. So slow, slowly that line is. Those kind of lines are good sometimes if you want to get it to phrasing right. Is like play it a couple of times in a row, like you know, play it like two, three, do it again. Maybe one more time. <laughs> All right, then the second chorus, he's rocking the same thing. To a D. And then just slightly different uh, on the ending here. He plays... Um, on the D's, he goes, um, I get A to an E. And then he does a little wild, you know, you uh, kind of hammer on pull off uh, of an E and an A. It's like in 16th notes, it'd be like, uh, you hear that really well. And then. So that last little bit, um, let's see, go from um, two, three, uh, two, three, and that's George's part. Charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com. If I didn't make it perfectly clear, you can download it and see for yourself.
There's a few overdubs that George does on the last chorus that I think are important to talk about because they add quite a bit. Um, he just plays, so on the very last chorus on the way out, he plays like a, a, an A power chord up here at the 12 fret and plays like, mm. repeats that. E power chord. D. Hits that A. Then the last two just rocks out. And on the very last one, it's a little different. He goes. And that's it. Well, I put it all together in a sound alike so you can see how all the parts fit together. So check this out. you enjoyed that and now you can see how all the parts fit together. As usual, I suggest you learn John's part and all of George's parts. Play along with my sound alike and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for you to download. And if you would be so kind, please subscribe to this channel. So have fun playing this great old song. And until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.